Welcome to Nacho Cheese Man Real Estate Edition with your host, Gus and Jess. Here, boys, take it away. Oh, crappy, crappy, crappy. There you go. You get the guy controls to the record button and he wasted no time whatsoever. What up, Jesse? We're here for the Nacho Cheese Man. You know what I mean? We uh, say Happy New Year 2023. We started the year with a bang. We'd like to thank all our viewers in Inglés and Español. We thank you guys for right. joining us. If you guys know, we're both in real estate. We're both investors. We're both investing in California and out of state in Michigan, right? We just want to get some stuff off our chest. We want to go over the news and what pertains to all my realtor guys. Talk to me, Jesse. What do you got for me? At first, the channel was like a parody, right? Um, but moving to where we're at, uh, we're just talking about like what really is happening, what's out there right now. But we want to just get to the point. Starting off with today's conversation is the health, the California homing crisis. What do we need? Do we need more homes? You know, because I, I guess it's stating here that the population rate for homeless has gone up 40,000 uh, people within the last, you know, four or five years. But what do you think is attributing to that? In my opinion, and what I see as of, you know, I'm, I'm a school teacher, so I get to talk to a lot of parents and the Hold rent. On, Gus. Is yeah. that my internet? Yes, that's your internet, big baby. You got to run that wire. It personally knows me. It says your unstable <laughs> internet. Let's talk about it. Forbes is talking about the pandemic really exploded homelessness more, right? Some of the people that I talk to, their rent has gone up 10% and lack of people leaving their houses, right? Um, you, you get to deal more with homeowners. So how's the market? How's the house the house market, where you see it at, and how does that affect homelessness? Perfect. So uh, so today's date is January 9th, 2023, okay? Um, I want to tell you guys, I've been doing this for 20 years, and, and I'm not your typical real estate agent. I got to see like the servicing side of it, who you make your payments to, who they make payments to, because it's not their money, number one. Uh, number two, if the house goes into foreclosure, how are they going to get the house back? Okay. Um, and uh, after that, we foreclose on the property. What are we going to do with it? How fast can I evict somebody? Um, you know, what are the procedures and protocols? Um, do I need to negotiate a short sale? Do I need to, you know, just ask these people to leave nicely by giving them some cash? And I literally talk about this topic now nonstop for the last three and a half months. And I call this, Gus, the gray zone. You talk to a buyer and the buyer says, I can't buy anymore. The rates are too high and the prices are too high. I'm just going to wait. And this is the conversation we have for the last three months where now we're in January and the buyers want to and then we got the sellers. We got the sellers. And, you know, five months ago, I used to get these guys 50000 over what they wanted. No contingencies, no appraisal. Like, you know, what you see is what you get. And you got to throw in your firstborn child to just get this house. Well, that's not the case anymore. So the sellers are like, nope, my home is still worth a million five. I'm not selling it unless I get a million five. John sold his house for a million five. I should get our John sold for a million two. I want a million five, mm -hmm. right? So that's the dilemma that we're you know facing. And that seller is now saying, if I don't get a million five, I'm not selling. So at this particular point, the buyer doesn't want to buy because the rates went up and the seller doesn't want to sell because he does, he's not going to get what he wants. So it's a gray zone. And if you were to ask me, how long is that going to last? Well, it's going to last until a person gets squeezed by the neck and has to make a decision. We're in a housing crisis. Go to, you know, uh, calmatters.org and you can read it for yourself. But the reality of this is that if we are in a housing crisis and your lease is up next month, okay? The landlord, he's gonna jack up your rate. He's gonna jack up your rent. And then you have to decide 
if you should buy a home or not, because you're going to have to decide whether to sign another six month lease, another year lease, or do something about it and purchase a home uh, by taking out money from your 401k, if that's what you're going to do to put as a down payment, um, to have a payment comparable to, you know, what you would have been paying in rent. And the reason why I'm telling you, like, I don't know what's going to happen because now everything's different on an individual basis. If you need to buy a home to get out of where it is that you're living to provide, you know, a better community uh, for your children, then you're going to buy a home. You know, if you need to buy a home so that you can be 45 minutes closer to work, you're going to buy a home. It doesn't matter what the interest rate is or what the housing market is doing. You're going to buy a home. Um, if you lose your job, uh, you can't make the payments. You're going to sell your home. And luckily right now, there's still equity in there. Um, and the buyer is should take advantage of that because they're going to be able to ask for closing costs this time around. They're going to be able to ask for a brand new roof, for you know repairs, for you know credits, for furniture. They could even ask for the car in the garage. If you need to sell, you're going to sell. I, so um, um, I remember when the last market crash, uh, we're buying a house, a brand new house, and the guys were throwing in a BMW, uh, like the small, the Series 3. They're like, if yep. you buy the house, we'll throw in a brand new BMW if you just buy the house because they were so desperate. To sell some of the houses when you bought the the model houses, they left it fully furnished just so people would take the house. Right, right. In my I mean, can, can we talk about that really quick? Because um, yeah, yeah. you just brought up the model home, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, the model home. I understand that there normally is five or six phases. Phase number one, it's kind of like the base model, and it's the cheapest one to get to. Every time it moves on to another phase, the phase could go up $100,000, mm -hmm. right? You know, or let's just say 50,000 on average. So by the time it gets to phase number five, the home has gone up 250,000. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you how this works. They sell the first one to see what they can get. And the thing is, just like a brand new car, a person will pay premium and a little extra to live in something that no one has ever lived in. So mm -hmm. if they have an extra $100,000 in the bank, they'll pay the extra $20,000 to lock up the deal, be the first one to live there. And they don't care where that money went because now the, the uh, builder is going to use that as a comparable, number one, to sell the next home at $25,000 over. So that's how property prices increase, number one. The second part is, if you're an FHA buyer, there's not conforming loan limits. That is how much the government is willing to lend in this area as a first-time buyer loan. And this first-time buyer loan, based on the limits, a builder will start building once it makes sense for them to be able to screw over a first-time buyer. This real wow. estate game is called hot potato. So a builder will say, you know what? Confirming loan limits now in Orange County, 900,000. What? Well, you know what? We might start building on that piece of land that we had 20 years ago. You know, conforming loan limits, 650,000, you know, Inland Empire, I don't know. Um, wow, that means that we can jack up the rates or not the rates, but we can jack up the closing cost because of that. So we're going to get this new pool of buyers that couldn't qualify before in order to be able to buy these properties now. Now, here's the deal. When a conforming loan limit gets increased, buyers out there, you guys have 45, minute, 45 days to go ahead and buy a home. Because just like we know that you now have a higher loan limit that you can go after. So do the sellers. So the sellers in two months are going to raise up their prices too. So you're always going to be playing catch up um, if in case you are that first time buyer. And it just gets worse if you're dealing directly with a builder. 
because a builder knows that they have you where they want you because you want to live in something that no one else has lived in yet. Now, the BMW story that you were just telling me, Gus, that's going to be phase six. We already squeezed all the lemonade out. Every, this is, every dime out, yeah. Yeah, this is just what's left over. So you're right. I'll throw in a BMW or I'll throw in all those upgrades that, you know, allowed me to sell these homes at a higher dollar amount um, and drop the potato on this, you know, family. Um, and uh, buyer beware. Now, keep in mind, you buy a brand new home, chances are your taxes are going to be higher here in California because oh, yeah. of mellow ruse, your taxes. Well, what's a mellow ruse tax? Uh, mellow ruse tax is you are paying for your services, the light, brand new light post, the sidewalk, the fire station, the elementary school. And these uh, mellow ruse are attached to your property for at least or up to 25 years. So, you know, at that point, the infrastructure should have been built and then your property taxes, you know, get reassessed. But that's the cost of buying a brand new build. Um, I learned that the hard way. It was maybe the second home that I purchased um, when I was like 23 or 24 years old. But now everything that we, you know, that I that I buy is resale. Oh, yeah. I, I, I always, when I first got married, my wife wanted a new house. And I told her a new house is like a new car. As soon as those back tires hit the street, you know, you lost some money. Now, you know, my brothers always bought new houses. And the misconception of a new house is that the house is ready to go. Yeah, it's ready to go in. But, you know, you got bare floors. Oh, oh you want tile? Oh, well, $6,000 for tile in the kitchen. Oh, you want a backsplash? Oh, no, no, the backsplash. That's another $1,200. That's another $2,500. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You want the stove, you want a fire burner stove. Okay, that's going to cost you. Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? There's the house that you see is like the going to the dealer, more. going to the dealer and looking at the fully loaded Escalade and then driving off with a Hyundai. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're looking at the Escalade, they're selling you the Escalade and at the end of the day, you get a Hyundai. Because right. you, you the finishes that you saw in that in that bathroom, those are not normal. The tile, um, the carpet, the, the tile. Yeah, and even tile, off. Gus, like you know, tile, if it's put, you know, horizontal or vertical, oh yeah, uh, that's easy peasy. Mm -hmm. But if you want to put it diagonal, oh custom, you know, price shoots up. And uh here's another trick. Normally, when you go into this new home builder, they're going to tell you, we will give you incentives to use our in-house lender. Oh, yeah. Our in-house lender will either give you closing cost or will give you some upgrades. Okay. Um, and depending on, uh, you know, what's going on in the market at that time, um, you're probably going to get screwed again. Right. Right. So, you know, you go in there, you buy a house for 500, you just put 50,000 in make-believe upgrades, right? And they're going to recommend their, you know, lender. And when you get into the lender's office, you know, this lender, they're taking a chance on this development. So the value that they claim is on this house is going to be the value of the house. And I'm using five hundred thousand uh, dollars as a new home build, um, just to keep numbers sane. But there ain't no home, brand new homes for five hundred thousand anymore. They're you know seven fifty, eight hundred. So just imagine your upgrades take you to the nine hundred thousand dollar level, and, and so on and so on. Another thing is that, guess what? Not just the builder knows what you paid for that house. The guy that cuts your loan knows what you paid for the house. The guy that does the tile knows what you pay for the house. The guy that the paints knows what. So the development down the street, I'm going to charge you 1500 to paint the house. 
your house, it costs $3,500. Wait a minute, it's the same house. No, no, no. That guy paid 400 grand for his house. You just shelled out 900,000. That means this is going to cost you more money. I saw that right. in the community. Um, my brother lives in Chino Hills. Anything to that backyard that he had to do, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 for a backyard. And I'm like, well, I sent you my guy, you know? Well, well, hold on. You just opened up another can of worms. Oh, we were talking about what was on the inside to get it the way that you want, that you can probably throw into the price and get financing from the lender, okay? Yeah. But your backyard you just talked about, they give you a concrete slab, you know, on walking out the grass, you know, window. And like, like in some cases, ship. <laughs> right, right. And in some cases, they'll say, well, okay, well, we will finance some of your backyard. Do you just want grass um, or something? But if you go in here saying, you know, I want, um, I want a waterfall, I want, you know, a pool, I want this, they ain't going to, you know, touch that. So if you're sitting on 300,000, you are going to put in your down payment. You're going to pay for your closing costs. And you are also going to pay for the upgrades in your backyard. And you're right, Gus. They're going to get the same guy or you're going to get the same guy that was working down the street. But this guy is going to charge you cash. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just here to disclose, you know, what you're going to be getting yourselves, you know, into. Um, right. At the end of the day, you know, you think you see that sign on the freeway, home starting in the low 500,000. And then you finish the deal and you're in at 630. Well, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, yeah, the last deal I made for a new house, it was 510. We're talking about five years ago. 510. I said, okay, I'll take it. You know, I figured I'd be all right. Then the guy goes, no, no, no. That's not your actual price. That's just where they're at now. I said, so you can give me any price that you want from whatever I land at. Yep. Yeah. And who relies, who who certifies that price? Our lender. So it was almost like going to a loan shark. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. We got you. Don't, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Yeah, we'll and, take it. Uh, sure. and so, so here, so, you know, we just talked about like what's happening, what problems you can get yourselves into with a brand new home. But here's a solution. If you really do want your brand new home, then go in there and ask them, is there any deals that have fallen out of escrow? That means that somebody has already picked out the carpet, the coloring, the layout, and in some cases, the upgrades. And the builder basically, you know, believed that this person was going to be able to pull the trigger on the house. So they started doing all these upgrades that the person wanted. Well, at this particular point, the way that this uh, development works that they cannot start on the next phase until the previous phase is sold out. So if there's two or three homes left there, that's why they'll throw in all the, um, the, the, the furnishings that, you know, the property has, that's why they'll throw in higher closing cost and also additional upgrades because you're picking up an ideal that somebody was unable to perform on. So if you want to come up on a builder, um, just look at the deals that they, you know, are falling out of escrow that for 5,000 bucks, you know, you can put a deposit on. Cool. So we gave you the problem. Our problem right now is a uh, housing crisis that we have in California Two, the problem that we have with new house development, especially uh, in our area where houses are premium. Three, the problem that we have with the lender, but we did have a solution for you guys, right? Before you go in there, the only thing I could tell you is don't take your heart in your sleeve. Make sure that you leave that heart at home, buy a house with your head, not with your heart. You know what I mean? Don't fall in love with anything. A house is just like a computer. You will, you will buy an expensive one or you'll buy a cheap one. And then tomorrow 
a more expensive one will come out and a more cheaper one will come out. So no matter what you buy, go ahead and buy your house, but do not overpay just to get the house. Every time I overpaid, I it, it didn't lead anywhere good. If that house is yours, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about voodoo energy now. If that energy, if that house is yours, the house is going to be yours. I had deals where I put money down and they said, no, we're getting more money. I said, cool, give me my money. You know what I'm saying? Here's my number. Call me if it falls off. And I get a phone call three months later going, guess what? This guy can get the deal. You know what I'm saying? Can, can we still get that deal? And sometimes they even lower the price for me to buy the house. They're like, right. okay, you know what? We'll pay all the closing costs if you jump in. We just need you because you're already all pre-approved. You're ready to go. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, trust your energy, uh, people. That, that's all I can tell you on this one. Uh, thank you, Jesse, for the topic. Guys, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with your people. Exactly. And you know what? Check this out, Gus. On this next video, we're going to talk about how to get over on resale, on regular properties, and what to look out for. Once again, see you on the next vid. Peace.